You are on the record. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, May 18th. Uh, the time is 9 o'clock. The board is in session to conduct its weekly open business meeting. All three commissioners are present. Also with us are Heather Luther. Heather Luther, Elizabeth Duncan. Duncan, and Beth, and Margaret, Carmel, mm -hmm. and Bob, and IT guy. And we have uh, on the bridge, we have Bob McQuaid, Evan Amadon, and Ryan. Okay, Map Clerk, are there changes to the agenda? No, there are not. Okay. First up is a resolution uh, the board will consider. I'm going to open the public hearing on resolution number 2626. Is there anyone who would like to provide testimony? No? Bob? Oh, just a quick over to you. Just maybe say a couple words about it. Uh, this is a resolution for a um, open market procurement for the uh, uh, juvenile court services switchboard and generator. Uh, we had previously come to the board before uh, with a, an opening and of this project, and we received two uh, bids. Uh, uh, one was over budget, and the other we didn't have a subcontractor that was uh, public uh, works licensed. So um, the uh, operations department went out and did a little market research and found other contractors that could do the work that could actually come in under budget. So that's why we're recommending an open market procurement uh, resolution. Right. Thank you. I remember that. The two, <laughs> 200 bids. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to provide uh, testimony? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing. Is there discussion from the board? Well, Mr. Chair, I'm ready to make a motion. I'll entertain a motion on this resolution. I'll move to approve resolution number 2626 as listed on the agenda. Is there a second to the motion? Second. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 2626. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we now have resolution number 2627, uh, resolution for destruction of certain records of the sheriff's office. I'm opening the public hearing on resolution 2627. Would anyone like to provide testimony? Apparently not. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll close the public hearing. Is there discussion from the board? Mr. Chair, I move to approve resolution 2627 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2627. All in favor say aye. 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 We now have licenses. Uh, we have uh, a number of licenses. Some, some new. Is there any discussion from, from all the licenses listed? And Mr. Chair, I'm ready to make a motion. I'll move to approve the licenses as listed or identified on the agenda, including 10 catering permits, one new license, four license transfers, and 80 license renewals. And I'll the chair to sign the documents on behalf of the board. Is there a second to that motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I will second it. The move and seconded to approve the licenses. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Looks like there's a new brewing company, Clairvoyant. Yeah. They're not new. Aren't they? Oh, no. Well, I'm just out of the loop. Well, I've been new. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be Chris's old neighbor. <laughs> okay. I see Dude DeWalt is on here. Oh, okay. So there you go. Yeah. Well, after them. All right. We have a, a celebrity with us today, uh, Mr. McCrane. Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, certainly not a celebrity. I don't know. Real quick, Heather, do you want to just give an update on where we are with licenses? Yes. So with uh, alcohol renewals, we do have 129 licenses to go to still be processed. Um, we have reached out yet again to businesses that we still have not received either completed applications or applications in general for. Um, we did a follow-up email with them yesterday. Uh, next Tuesday's business meeting on the 25th is the last open business meeting to approve licenses prior to their expiration. Uh, so we are hopefully having a push for any businesses that are planning to remain uh, serving and stay open. 
uh, to, to get their license in for us. Um, we are anticipating that there will be several businesses after the expiration of their license. Um, so you may still see uh, license renewals into June, but we are hoping that the overwhelming majority do not let their license last. Do they get a late fee if they're late filing? Uh, not from the county. Yeah, Mr. Ren, it's not a late fee, but they get to stop serving alcohol. <laughs> stop serving. Yeah. It, well, we, that's sort we of run in, Unfortunately, every year we run into one or two. It'll be interesting this year with the pandemic and the shutdowns, you know, because there was churn uh, in terms of the industry, we may see some effect there. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, we always have some. We work really closely, Heather's team with the Sheriff's Office, uh, Sergeant Durrell, to go out and mode, try and encourage people to get their applications in. Mr. Chair. Yes. But would you let us know um, the stragglers if they were the same ones as last year? Sure. Yeah. It would be interesting to see if there's a duplication. There. We do have some repeat offenders, as we like to call them. <laughs> Re um, yeah. Repeat offenders. Yeah. Every year. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this year, actually, with a lot of those businesses that we typically would see closer to the, the end crunch time, uh, renewals they did get their stuff in a lot uh, sooner um, so definitely happy to see that and happy to see Good. businesses going um, as uh, Bill had mentioned though as of 11 59 p.m. on May 31st that is when uh, alcohol licenses expire yeah. so technically come midnight on the 1st of uh, June they are no longer allowed to serve or sell legally okay well, thank you. Uh, Bill, do you have any further updates for us? Uh, today is election day uh, for the Meridian Library District and the CUNA Library District. Uh, voting is underway. Have you been Actually, able to staff up for it? Uh, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been, it has been, it's been an interesting, just we're, we're learning a lot from it. I would say it was entertaining. I was watching in the bunker and Mayor Simison was the first person to vote this morning. Uh, popped up first thing on the screen. Uh, uh, but the um, things are, it's been quiet in terms of early voting. Meridian was the uh, most turnout in terms of early voting location, but still really quiet election. I expect that's what the day will be like. One of the things we do have planned out for the day is um, this afternoon, we'll actually be doing a, a test run um, just in terms of our emergency response with the uh, mobile voting unit. So we'll actually take it out and vote an actual voter at the unit just to work out some of the kinks. We've had to pull it out for one or two situations, but trying to refine our response time, how we do it, make sure all the equipment, especially because we're using more equipment with the e-poll books and stuff nowadays um, to get that. So that so this is a good election, just like uh, March was for us to kind of refine and improve um, some of our processes. Um, but it hasn't garnered a lot of attention so far. You're not gonna have to get Bessie. Move. No, uh, we did not touch Bessie at all this election because, again, it's too small in terms <laughs> right. of the total number of ballots cast. There's just no need. Um, but we'll be voting people and we'll uh, How many probably ballots be there you expect will be cast? I don't, you know, I don't know in terms of total turnout. It'll be in the thousands. but really? Yeah, it should be. But it won't be, you know, huge. I mean, that's relative to our 300,000 registered voters. So, Well, but they're not all in that library. No, no, they're not. We, but we have... Just over 40 precincts that are, that are in, in, in use today, district. yeah, between the two library districts. Because one is Meridian, right, which is right. still a sizable area. Um, so uh, voting is actively happening. But your, uh, the, the next election coming up is school board elections, is it not? The next one, we don't anticipate as of right now an election in August. Um, it's always still a possibility that's financial questions for schools. Right. As far as we know, we don't expect one. So November uh, will be both the city council races as well as the West Ada trustee and CUNA trustee elections. I've noticed. I've already noticed some campaigning for the West Ada trustee. I've yeah. seen it both for city elections and the trustee elections. Right. Yes. All right. Well, do you have anything? The else? filing window for those will be uh, the last two weeks of August. So you'll start to see that pick up as we get closer to August. For both the... Uh, for all those races that come up for November. Okay. All right. Well, do you have anything else for us? No. Nope. I'll be talking to you more here in a little bit. Okay. You've got all the ARPA thing figured out, I guess. I don't know about that, but we're, we're working on it, <laughs> as we discussed yesterday. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, next up is our claims journal. Um, we had a little uh, computer glitch. And but I did go through that today, this morning, but we finally got it in. <laughs> Yesterday, I guess. 
Um, I'll entertain a motion in the claims journal. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move to authorize payment of claims in the claims journal dated May 14th, 2021. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize claim journal. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, next are the personnel actions. Do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the personnel actions as listed on the agenda and that the summary sheet remain on file in the commissioner's office. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Assessor's office, Bob McQuaid, do you have any updates for us? No lines, et cetera? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I've just a, a couple of very brief remarks. Uh, with motor vehicles, we're really getting close to being fully staffed. At Shinden, uh, we have eight stations and we have eight employees there. Uh, Franklin, we have 10 stations. We have eight working. Uh, two are in the uh, uh, final stages of interview. And then at Meridian, we have 10 stations there, seven are manned, and we have three people that uh, we're just waiting for the background checks, and then uh, we'll be fully staffed there. So things are, are we've really turned the corner with motor vehicles. Uh, we still have problems, but it's nothing like it was uh, a month ago even. Uh, as that's everything for motor vehicles. The only other thing I'm gonna mention is I've got a meeting with you at two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, which I, for the assessment briefing, I'll give you a, a pretty detailed uh, analysis of the assessment role for 2021. That's everything I have right now. How has the increased staffing, has that cut down on the, on the wait time? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I, I haven't seen this, uh, the latest issue, but I know from downtown, uh, things are going much, much more smoother. I would say three weeks ago, we were uh, closing the line off about two o'clock in the afternoon because we just couldn't handle everybody. We are not having to turn people away. In fact, yesterday we had maybe three or four periods where there was absolutely no one waiting. So uh, again, I haven't seen what's going on out in the other ones. I'm waiting for that data, but it's from down here, uh, it's, it's the best it's been really since October. And we have three people working down here. Right. And also, one more thing to note, uh, we have temporarily closed STAR that was effective today. Uh, we uh, took one of those employees, they're down here, so we have three employees here, or motor vehicle clerks, and then the other one was uh, sent over to Meridian. Well, that's, so that's, that's and I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm, that, that's good. I, I suppose that uh, we may get a few complaints from Jim and Canyon Counties because they can't use our STAR office. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> in fact, I was talking to someone the other day. Uh, I was standing in line at my bank, and this guy came up to me and said, how long, it, you know, is STAR closed permanently? And I said, no, it's just temporarily. He said, oh, okay. Well, I live in Middleton, and I always use the STAR office for my renewals. All right. All right. Anything else, Bob, until this afternoon? Uh, Mr. Chair Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, that's everything I have for right now. Mr. Okay. Chair? Yes. Hey, Bob, now that uh, the city of Boise has uh, rescinded their mask mandate, can we now uh, expect that all locations of uh, your offices are open to the public to people without masks? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Davidson, as of yesterday morning, uh, we posted signs that said masks are optional. Thank you, Bob. All right. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Bob? Uh, that's everything. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Now we have our distinguished treasurer. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. <laughs> Chair and Commissioners. Um, just an update on property taxes. So this week we will be mailing the second half 2020 notices. So these are for taxes that were billed back in November. Sure. So, so there are no surprises in terms of the numbers there. Um, and as you're aware, our office has no discretion in calculating these amounts or late charge or interest. Um, but what we have done is um, tried to improve the convenience to the taxpayer and also our education. 
So just a few things that we're doing on that. One, Cloverdale facility will open on Monday to the public, which you visited. Um, last December, that facility served over 1,200 taxpayers. So taxpayers who don't want to come down here, um, but we're able to serve them out there. Um, two, we've designed a new insert that's going out in the reminder notices. Um, one of the challenges with this second half bill is that if the payment is late, by law, interest goes back to January 1st. Um, again, the taxes initially were, were due in December. Um, so our new insert on our website, we've included a picture um, trying to show um, the effect of a late payment and how it will go back. You know, we've said it in words, we're trying another picture. So the more we can educate taxpayers to pay on time because we're required to do that. Sure. I'm also Good. excited to announce that we have a brand new drop box in Meridian. Um, this is on the Weed and Pest and Paramedics campus on Pine Street. Um, so many thanks <coughs> to your directors, to Director Schroeder, Director Rain, um, and operations who um, really collaborated with us to, to make this happen. So it's installed and it's open for business. So just wanted to share that. Mr. Chair? Yes. So um, I think it was a year ago, if you pay online, then for some reason your office didn't send um, a paper uh, notice as well. Is that still the practice? Um, Mr. Chair, um, Commissioner, if you pay online, mm -hmm. you did not send a notice. Mm -hmm. You didn't get a paper notice. Um, a receipt or the actual No, the just bill. the actual bill. Um, we, we do send out, so people can sign up for online statements, mm -hmm. but the system is set up is that if the taxpayer has not viewed the PDF seven days prior to the due date, at that, or maybe it's 10 days, at that point it is mailed out. Oh, but if you viewed the but PDF. But if you viewed it, then oh, okay. it shows that you have, you are aware of it. What's the name of that little, little machine that shakes everything up when, when you get them in? That's the jogger. The jogger. Okay. Yes. So you'll be using the jogger here pretty quick. We will be. Okay. Yes. We're we got Bessie the cow and the jogger. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, hey, that's thank you. you hey, thanks, Beth. Do you have anything else for us? That's it from our office. All right. Well, thank you. Mr. Chair, just yes. one thing. Maybe on the website, if um, someone views the PDF, Mm -hmm. um, could there be a, a notice that you will not receive uh, anything in the mail or hard copy? I think that might be confusing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about yeah. it. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm going to see if we could do that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is interesting. We have grant application signed by me, uh, with which we, uh, we've already received part of the money, I understand, correct? Right. This is a ratification. Yep. Okay. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chair. Okay. I move to approve and ratify grant number 2106A as identified on the agenda and has been signed by Commissioner Beck on May 12, 2021 and authorize the chair. Yes, I don't need to authorize you to sign it again, <laughs> but you've signed it on behalf of the board. Thank you. Do we have a second for that motion? Mr. Chair, I will second that. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> that was a speedy grant that came in. <laughs> anyway, okay. We have uh, next up uh, interim event agreements for Expo Idaho. Are there any questions or discussions on this item? No, sir. It's just one item. It's an interim event memorial service mm -hmm. for 52921. And I'll move to go ahead and approve that one interim event agreement as listed on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign documents on behalf of the board. Do we have a second? I didn't know we did memorial services there, but it's nice we can use it for that. I'll uh, second. Okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, are there any questions or discussion uh, regarding the agreements on today's agenda? We have uh, four agreements. I have no questions. I've read through them and I'm ready to make the motion. I'll entertain a motion. Okay, move to approve the four agreements as listed on the agenda and authorize the chair to sign documents on behalf of the board. Is there a second to the motion? 
Second. Been moved and seconded to authorize the agreements. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Procurement. There we go. <clears throat> Bid opening for RFP 21049. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Commissioners. Uh, yes, before you this morning, we have the opening of RFP 21049, the Ada County Elections Printing and Mailing Services. And we received four proposals uh, for this project, and Evan has those up on our bonfire e-procurement system. And if you're ready for us to go ahead and proceed, we'll proceed with opening. We're ready. All righty, Evan. Go ahead and open them up. And, and what is the printing and mailing for? This is uh, uh, for a field shop. So, uh, it's yep. Mr. Chair and Ryan, this, so this is for um, all the notices, like postcards and stuff we sent out. This does not include ballots. We have a special contract specific for ballot printing and ballot mailing. So this is kind of all the other stuff, like the change of polling location, notification cards when voters register, all that kind of material. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Chairman, we have our, our four, four proposers up there. And if you'd like, I can read those into the record. Go ahead, read them in the record. All right, so the first one is Corporate Mailing Services Incorporated. Uh, the, other, the second one is NPC Incorporated. The third is Presort Center. <laughs> and the fourth is Treasure Valley Litho. So, okay. Um, the uh, evaluation team will need some time to evaluate these proposals, and uh, we would like to request this be tabled for final ranking and award recommendation to the June 1st, 2021 open business meeting. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'll yeah. make the motion to move. I move to table the final rankings and award recommendation for RFP 21049, 80 County Elections Printing and Mailing Services to June 1st, 2021. Okay. Do we have a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 We'll see you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, Phil, this isn't something we could do in house. This particular kind of mailing, or oh, um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, right. we print enormous volumes. Like I think we just sent out sixteen thousand postcards just recently. So, yeah, we definitely don't have a print shop in house. Yeah. I mean, we we try to look at. We've even looked at using the state print shop or Boise City print shop. We use for some things, um, but this is the most cost effective approach: is to use one of the local printers if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm surprised LaVoie or AutoSort isn't on there, aren't they? Well, it's for printing. Right? Yeah, AutoSort's on a printer. Well, that's right. But, yeah. uh, LeBois, or, uh, but like ESP, we've ESP used, we have, yeah, we've contracted with ESP in the past, so I don't know why ESP hmm. hasn't. But ESP has done some of the work for us in the past. Yeah. Okay. I feel like Commissioner Davidson, we did reach out to a number of different printers, including ESP to make sure that they did get the uh, RFP for this. So they were, they were aware of it. Sure. Hey, Jess. Hello. Hey, John. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Where would you like that? Uh, you want to sit? Where are you on? You can sit right here. All right. Mm -hmm. Morning, how are you? Good. Good. All right. Lastly, on the agenda today, we have a discussion regarding the Capital City Development Corporation offer for the Triangle Lot. Who would like to start this off? Uh, I can, Mr. Chairman. Great. And commissioners, I just want to provide a little bit of background so uh, everybody's level set on kind of where we've been and how we got to where we are right now and what's on the table today. Okay. So. Sometime last fall, uh, CCDC, Capital City Development Corporation, uh, approached the county with an interest to purchase what we refer to as the Triangle Lot. The, I think it's parcel nine on the, on the uh, maps and uh, the drawings. Uh, we, the county uses it as a surface parking lot now, just immediately west of the current courthouse. And uh, CCDC <coughs> discussed with us their, uh, their desire to procure that land from the county for a development on that property, which would include a, a parking garage as well. And 
uh, several other things that CCDC has already come to the board and, and described what that development might look like. Uh, after that, a letter of intent was uh, signed by the county and CCDC on January 5th, 2021. And after that, uh, discussions continued and the, the first step was to get an appraisal on the property. So a uh, third party appraiser did an appraisal on the property and that came out to be $6.86 million, $6.861 million. Get that one in there. <laughs> there uh, as I see the exact uh, amount written here. And so then after that appraisal came in, CCDC has been working on an actual offer, and that offer has two pieces to it. There's a purchase and sale agreement and a parking agreement, because uh, we all know that parking is crucial down in this corridor, and, and part of the offer on the Triangle lot is making sure that the county still has parking spaces going forward. <coughs> that parking agreement really has about three pieces to it, uh, which are time-phased. Uh, the first phase is, should there be a sale, what is, how is the, the property treated in our current parking on that lot uh, between the sale and when construction might start on a development, uh, which could be you know a few years uh, of time frame in there. And the way it's written is things would stay like they are now, that uh, currently county employees pay $10 a month to parking that lot. That would stay the same, there'd be no increase in cost from the county to CCDC on the lot. Uh, employees would still pay the same amount, pretty much standard status quo in that first time period. The phase two of the parking agreement, second piece would be, uh, should there be a sale and construction commences, then during the time of construction, those parkers that are there currently are displaced, but there would be a, an arrangement in another parking garage nearby where all of those displaced parkers could park in the other parking garage at Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, just when you say nearby, that could be 10 blocks, 12 no, blocks away. Like, so give us a definition of nearby. It's in the lot that's, uh, well, you can tell oh, yeah, it's a, it, it, the commissioner, the, the, we've secured parking in the parking garage at uh, Fifth and uh, Grove. At Fifth or, and Six and Six and Grove, the Clay Carly owned uh, parking garage that you've used in the we've past. We've used in the past. Yeah, we've used that same parking in the past. We have an agreement um, and we have that covered. Then uh, that's phase two during construction. And then the third piece of the parking agreement is after a development would be completed on the property, that would include a parking garage and the county has the rights to uh, secure up to 400 spaces in that parking garage. There's also another element in here because there's uh, obviously uh, a big concern on the count of the on the part of the county that definitely there will be parking uh, on that lot one way or the other so they also put a provision in here that should some partial development occur but within five years may 1st 2026 by then if there is no parking developed there that a one acre parcel would come back to the county so that we could develop uh, ourselves or with the developer, we could put a parking solution on that lot. So it's written in here that one way or the other, there's a parking solution uh, on that lot going forward. Mr. Chair, well, I don't see that in the documents. Where is the the last provision on the one acre? And how many spots can you build on a one acre? Uh, parking agreement, page two, uh, paragraph 2C. I can read it. If construction activities for a parking facility in the project do not commence by May 1st, 2026, CCDC agrees to convey ownership of one acre parcel to the county for parking. Uh, I can add no charge. Okay. Add no charge. No charge. Okay, so Commi fair. Commissioner, if I could add sure. that you asked how many spaces that, that could yeah. hold. We that's our intent is to use that acre to go vertical with a parking structure. And okay, so it'd be the it's same almost unlimited. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Depends on how deep it is, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, or, or how, how oh, high you go. Yeah. How high you go. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically the this, this summary. The, the purchase and sale agreement, uh, the, the price is the exact 
appraisal value, uh, the offer is six point eight six one million dollars, and then I described the parking arrangement as well. So, with that, I don't know if there's any other um, backdrop or if I summarize that correctly, Mr. Bruno. Uh, thank you. Um, just that you know we've worked. Uh, hard for the last uh, number of weeks with your representatives, with just uh, Mr. Osla and Jim Shipman from Colliers. We've tried to address every concern uh, that they brought to us. We've definitely uh, been challenged. We've tried to bring forth solutions in this agreement. We also know this is the start of a conversation um, and that we certainly would like to have the opportunity to address any concerns or adjust any terms um, you know, to your liking. Is Jim Shipman here? He's not him. with us, is he? Okay. Nope. So, um, Jess, have you had conversations with Jim Shipman? Uh, consultant? I, I have. I sent him these documents and told him about the meeting today. I don't okay. know if he got And that. what is his opinion on, on the value that they placed at this $6.8 million? His, uh, when, when I asked him about that, he said... Uh, it's a fair offer. That is, he's, he's not sure if it'd be the highest offer, but he thought it was fair, and that the parking agreement is is a piece that maybe other developers wouldn't necessarily bring, even if they had a slightly better price that they brought. So he just said it's a it's an interesting element with the parking agreement in addition to the purchase so that and adds sale some value. that you wouldn't necessarily see that from from others developers. But uh, yeah, Jim's comment was it's a fair. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, so, you know, we've been having conversations since I think back in December 20, and, and I've made it really clear that I'm trying to, uh, on the record, build a record on why, where I'm coming from this property. I don't think the highest and best use for us or the public is a dirt parking lot, you know, one, one level. Um, but I also... Um, was only really interested in doing something as a partnership with CCDC. And that was around the vision that we've had conversations on the record about. Um, and then when you had, I guess it was last month, um, the CCDC board meeting, mm -hmm. it seemed like they didn't know that vision. Or there haven't been those conversations with the board members, and it seemed like they had a different vision. Um, so that kind of brings me back to, my original intent to go down this path is that we create this great community asset um, for, for people, for taxpayers, for everyone, frankly. Um, so now I don't know where, where that vision is going. And so um, I would feel more comfortable um, with having, I think, a joint meeting with CCDC's board, with this board, so we can have that conversation and we know um, where we're headed or where we're not headed. Because to me, that made all the difference in the world, hmm. um, you know, what goes in there. Because it was the picture of expanding the bat, you know, Basque block down and making it walkable and possibly Shakespeare going in there. And I know none of these um, have been um, cemented in stone, right, in the agreements. Right. But you have these conversations going. And, and there's been, you know, the Department of Labor building come into play and where they're at. So I would just like to have a, a joint conversation with them. Is kind of where I'm standing right now. If I could address that, Mr. Could, Chairman, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner, is it possible to speak? This is, this is Dana Zuckerman. Oh, great. I'm chair of I'm, I'm chair of the CCDC. Hey, Dana. I, okay, sure. Hello, Go ahead, Dana. Thank you. That is a wonderful suggestion. I want you to know that our executive committee has had conversations um, internally about future plans here, and John has kept us um, updated with you know, the needs of the county as well as many different ideas that we have for this parcel, and, you know, obviously including gra the garage and a whole lot more surrounding it. Um, we haven't yet discussed much of this with the full commission because we didn't know yet if there was something to discuss. We've been waiting to hear what the, com the decision of your commission is. Um, and I love the idea of us sitting down together and making sure that whatever happens, that both of our commissions are satisfied and we're doing the best for the community. Thank you, Dana. Well, Dana, I do have a question. Uh, I just read in, uh, in a report that uh, 
your discussion when the when your board dis discussed this, it was reported that uh, you wanted to build affordable housing there. And I don't recall ever having that discussion. So part of our conversation was affordable housing on um, some place on that greater block. So the parcel that we're discussing with you right now, the triangle would definitely include a garage to house your um, needs and more of the area's needs. And then we're looking at the greater parcel to see where affordable housing could fit in there. Yeah, and I would just like to add to that that the presentation that we made to you on, I believe, March 11th did speak to mixed a mix of uses on this five acres of 2.1 combined with the neighboring privately owned properties. That, in, of course, some of those units we would want to be below 100% AMI, which the affordability discussion can get murky, but I would point to the RFP that we just issued this week where we're asking for a certain number of units to be 80% to 100% AMI and others can be you know, up to 120% AMI or market rate. Um, so it's not, it's, it's a little misleading to say that, um, I would say that report was not, was not accurate, but I would say the report in Boise Dev written by Margaret Carmel on March 11th <laughs> right was you. accurate, was accurate. And that's the one to, sure to point to. Good job, Margaret. And, and sorry, um, Mr. Chair, if, if it's all right yeah. to add to that. Sure, go ahead. When we're talking affordable, thank you very much. Uh, we're not talking necessarily about low income housing. We're not talking about bringing people off the street and you know, building the kind of facility that would have services to keep homeless people off the street. We're, we were thinking more in lines of something that's affordable for a teacher, a firefighter, honestly, county employee, that, that level of housing. And how many units were, I, again, I didn't, I didn't listen to the entire board meeting minutes, but how many units, I, what would that mixed use look like? And again, this could probably be a discussion that we set up with the board. Yes, Commissioner, we didn't get that far. We, we were brainstorming. Yeah, okay. I'd say we're back to that chicken and egg situation. Yeah. We, and I, I think I mentioned this even going back to January, to bring in a fully developed development plan didn't make sense because we don't have control of the property. So you say you put out an RFP? Yes, we did. On that property? No, no, sir. On, uh, <laughs> on, I'm curious. So, I'm, okay. Uh, block 68, the corner of uh, 10th and State Street. Uh, we just issued that today. It was approved by our board last week. Um, but that's going to lead to mixed use as well. Mm -hmm. And everything we do is, is um, housing is definitely an important piece of it but it's not just one level of rental um, housing. In fact, this could even lead to condominium and owned housing on this on these properties as well. Okay. Well, Mr. Chair, obviously, you know, we need to look at what's best for the taxpayers and best for the community. Um, so, again, I think for me, I'd love to have that conversation with the board, and hopefully we can together land on something that's, that's a win-win for everyone. So that's where my head's at. Definitely need to uh, have some more discussion on uh, some of the some of what's some of what's in your in your offer. In my view, uh, I did read the appraisal, and, and from my reading of the appraisal, uh, this was on the low end. He he gave a he gave a range, as I recall. Was I am I wrong there? No, this was the this well, was well, the uh, this was the number. Oh, I get that, but he he said there was a range of values capable of, uh, of, of being represented, I think. Anyway, uh, well, I don't have any more questions. Do you, Commissioner? I don't have any questions. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm confused. I didn't see the range. I thought that they were coming in at, the appraisal was coming in at this amount. But if there is a range that that's different, if you could let us know. Commissioner, not that I'm aware of. I, I believe there'd be comparables, um, but they're not a triangle with maybe it was a range that, then maybe it was a because see this has been going on a lot quite a while, while. Yeah. maybe it was just a range that shipment gave to us in an email well, or that something. Could yeah. be. Possibly that, or that. Maybe, maybe that's yeah. what it was. I don't recall exactly. 
There, there are some some factors on this property that would take it down lower than some other properties um, that might have been included as comparables. There are setbacks here for utilities and and then of course access power station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, right, but the triangle shape is not you know right. perfect for development, but we're in a position to to help yeah. solve that. So, well, Mr. Chair, in addition, I think we should have um, before we meet with their board a meeting with uh, Jim Shipman to go over this addition of the one acre parking um, piece to see what kind of value that adds because they want to make sure if we move forward we're getting maximum value for it. So that'd be great if you could set that up, Jess. Well, we should also have a discussion with our legal staff as well yeah. on the, on the, because I, I still have some questions about this parking uh, situation. If I'm, if I'm understanding it correctly, um, you're suggesting that uh, you want to give the county taxpayers six point eight million dollars, and if you haven't done anything by five years, that it, that, uh, that you just say, "Oh, sorry, we're not going to do anything." Here's the property back. Is that right? We were looking for a solution to the to the scenario where a parking garage did not get built, and if that was the situation, which is Certainly not the plan. <laughs> well, I wouldn't think that you would have enough property then. That gives you uh, plenty of motivation, ownership. certainly. Yeah, <laughs> you would have ownership and, uh, yeah. that and would control of it. You could go as far as uh, you like. you're, you're, you're wanting to uh, provide the the space for uh, county employees to continue parking on the asphalt park. It's not dirt, it's asphalt. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, dirty asphalt. What How's dirty that? asphalt? <laughs> nonetheless, uh, you're wanting to give uh, the county employees. The uh, opportunity to continue to park in there until, at some point in time, there was some construction, right? That's correct. And I'm I'm a little confused on I'm seeing twice in here 150 dollars per per uh, parking space. Can you maybe expand on that a little bit? That that's when uh, the phase two. So when construction starts, the parkers that are currently on the triangle lot will be displaced, and they'll go into another garage. That would be the rate in the other garage while construction is uh, commencing. And then when construction is finished, you're proposing $150 per day or per parking space per month for that one. Uh, I don't believe there's a, I don't believe the price for the finished parking garage in the future that we have the right to 400 spaces. There's not a dollar amount attached to that. Okay. Wouldn't we need that? The, yeah. the projected dollar amount, Commissioner? Yeah, yeah. Or a range. Well, yes, it would make sense for you to, to have that range. identified. I think um, you also have the option to own part of that parking garage in this, in this scenario. So if you choose and you want to own four decks of parking and control those, um, that's, that's in this agreement as well. Okay. All and, right. and just to clarify, too, uh, Commissioner, the triangle lot is 2.1 acres. Yes. And the proposal is if there's not any parking garage constructed on that in that five year time period till May 1st, 2026, one acre. It's not just the, the property comes back to us, one, one acre. acre. Oh, one acre. One acre. Oh, okay. uh, enough room yeah. to build a parking garage. Oh. On. But it's not the entire property. It's not a one-to-one. -one, right. The one whole thing. One. I just want to clarify that. That. Was, right. yeah, that was a page two that we were looking at. All right. Paragraph C. Okay. So, yeah, we can get with uh, Jim Shipman and then maybe answer some of these questions. Well, I don't have any further questions unless do you have any questions. Or? Well, just a comment. I mean, one of my concerns is the, the timing of this when we're talking about the future of, of this building. You know, whether or not we uh, build a separate administration building to expand the courthouse, you know, the administration offices move somewhere else, expand the court here. We're talking about potentially leasing something. Um, so I, I kind of feel like until we have that locked down, um, I don't get the sense of urgency of giving away a piece of real estate that is a potential build site to expand this courthouse. Um, it could also be something that we use to barter or trade if we do if we are building another building somewhere down the line. But I just kind of feel like until we have the future of this building locked down, it might be premature to to sell 
off the triangle lot, especially without a grand shared vision like Commissioner Kenyon talked about, something that would be, you know, seriously meeting the community needs that we could, you know, expedite selling it. But, I, you know, as we've discussed, we haven't really heard that uh, grand shared vision yet. So um, I'm, I'm leaning towards, you know, tabling till we've uh, figured out a plan for whether we're expanding this building or not. If I may, Mr. Chair. So one of the things that we've looked at with the master's facility plan and with the, the footprint of this building um, is we do have the capacity there is the original design was to put additional two wings on this building. And then we also have property that you're paying us every month for in the front here that could be developed on. So my thought on this was this is an odd piece. It's a triangle piece in and of itself. It's not buildable for an admin building, even if we wanted to have an admin building downtown in the most expensive part of town. And I don't think it's great for county employees or the public to try to access for many reasons. Um, and if this could be part of a, a larger vision for the community, you know, I think that it's great. And the timing for me is all about the CCD scene as a position to do something now, and they may not be in two years, probably won't be in two years. They'll move this money and put it somewhere else. So timing is, there's a lot more elements to that. And, and the reason that um, I'm even looking at this is I've just sort of uh, put an X through the triangle lot as not being viable for the county to really do anything on except have it this one, the one level dirt surface parking lot, <laughs> which That's is- fun. The asphalt, which is not, yeah. High quality like, asphalt. Best, best use for county taxpayers. <laughs> okay, well, well, clearly we have some more discussions to uh, to engage in. And, and uh, unless there's any more discussion, you know, do you have anything else you want to add? Just want to thank you for your time and consideration on this and the number of meetings we've had. Um, they've all been very positive and, and couple, I feel yeah. very, um, sure. very good working with your team. Yeah. All right. Well, we thank you. We'll get for, that meeting set up then. Well, thank you. For Thanks, coming. Dana. Uh, thank you, Dana. Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you. I don't know you, but Doug would. Doug, you were here and ran the ran the uh, slideshow, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Development yeah. director. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We'll now be in recess. You are on the record. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, May 18th. The time is uh, 9.48. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure our official timekeeper didn't get... Didn't, yeah. Didn't, okay. Uh, the 940, board... 9.49. Oh, okay. Excuse me. It's 9.49. <laughs> Um, the Board of Commissioners uh, sitting as the Board of Emergency Medical Services District is in session to conduct its weekly open business meeting. All three commissioners are present. We also have with us Sean Rain. We have our, our distinguished uh, clerk, uh, Bill McGrain, and we have Margaret Carmel with us and the IT guy. Okay. Uh, Madam... Clerk, are there changes to the agenda? No, there are not. Okay, looks like we're going to sell sell forward. Uh, resolution number 2628.
for the sale of a 2009 Ford 250 LXT. I'm going to open the public hearing on resolution number 2628. Is there anyone like to provide testimony? You don't need the truck anymore? Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, nope, it's, uh, that, that truck has served, served us well. It was a battalion chief rig for a number of years and got a lot of miles put on it, but it's uh, not needed anymore. Okay. Is there anyone that would like to provide uh, testimony? Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing. Public hearing is closed. Is there a discussion from the board? No, but I'll make the motion. I'll entertain a motion then. I'll move to approve resolution 2628 as listed on the agenda. Is there a second to the motion? Second. We move and second to approve resolution number 2628. All in favor say aye. 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 Next we have the claims journal. I'll entertain a motion on the claims journal. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to authorize payment of claims as listed on the Claims Journal, dated May 14th, 2021, regarding EMS expenditures. We'll second that. Moved and seconded to approve the uh, Claims Journal. All in favor say aye. 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 We'll now take up personnel actions. May I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the personnel action as listed on the agenda and that the summary sheet remain on file in the Commissioner's office. I'll second that. So moved and seconded to approve the uh, personnel actions. All in favor say aye. 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 Sean, do you have anything for us? Mr. Chair, Commissioners, good morning. Uh, not really anything big. Our COVID numbers are still staying low. We're at a moving average of three, and we've been there for probably two months now, two months uh, or maybe a little bit more. Um, you probably saw the CDC guidance that came out last Thursday. So uh, we met as an access system yesterday and just kind of every, got everybody on the same sheet of music, reaffirmed that we're still going to wear PPE on calls. Uh, when we go out to patients' homes, but in the stations, we're going to relax things and let the crews finally take these off. And so I think I could hear all of our stations, you know, <laughs> cheering, cheering yesterday yeah. when they, we put out the directive uh, rescinding our mask mask orders. So. Breathe now. Breathe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't have anyone, you know, walking into the offices no. or anything, no. so you don't need to message anything to the public. Okay. Now, I do, I do have a question. You say you have a rolling average of about three per day. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, because uh, it's always been a, been a question to me, is when somebody is picked up, do they have other maladies as well, or is it just COVID? Or, uh... Mr. Chair, it could be. Um, well, what the, the data set that we're pulling from is actually um, – flu-like illness or COVID-like illness because the symptoms are so closely related. Um, we get in the dispatch information, the dispatchers actually ask, is somebody in the home COVID positive? Uh, so we do know on those patients that they've already tested positive. Um, but it could be a variety of things from, you know, cardiac type chest pain to difficulty breathing, fatigue, um, you know, we've kind of seen, seen everything with, with COVID. But, but then that, that preps your uh, your people when they arrive. They know that they have yeah. the potential of a, of a, I mean, they have a, they actually have a COVID yeah. patient there. So they're fully protected themselves. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and the only change to our, our personal protective equipment that we've made recently is uh, removing gowns <clears throat> for everything except for air, what we call an aerosolizing procedure. Anytime we breathe for somebody, um, that type of thing, we still ask them to put the gowns on. But the, the gowns are, are pretty restrictive, and they get really hot this time of year. And what we've learned is uh, you, you don't, you're less likely to get COVID from surfaces than... Uh, uh, we thought maybe last spring. And so N95s, eye protection, of course, gloves, they wear in on every call. So we'll continue to do that. Yeah. All right. But the morale is a little bit higher. Yeah. <laughs> spring and no mask. Spring, and no mask. It's feeling stations, a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Everybody at Benjamin was uh, grinning from ear to ear yesterday and was good, good to see some smiling faces. So. That you can tell us more. Right. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, good. well, good. Well, Sean, do you have anything else for us? That's it, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Well. Chair, just one thing. You and I, um, I think we spoke last Friday. I'm just really um, interested in making sure that people who 
did not get vaccinated and possibly have compromised immune systems, that they feel really comfortable with going ahead and wearing a mask mm -hmm. and or asking other people in a small group setting sure. to put on a mask mm -hmm. um, for our employees. So just let's just make sure that yep. we message that. Yeah, and we uh, that was that was included in our messaging yesterday. Is you know if you haven't been vaccinated or if you're just not comfortable, the mask is still an option. Yeah. I think the it, we're kind of empowering the employees to to you know take it upon themselves to make the decision that's right for them. So. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to stay for the uh, speech. Yeah, have a market. We're in recess. <laughs>
All right, well, thank you, Chairman Beck, Jeff Bauer again. Um, we, I, I do want to clarify that we're not here today asking for any approval, just an informational meeting. Um, and I think what what's kind of led to this meeting was the fact that um, Avamore has re officially requested the City of Eagles consent to expand the, this district. So I, I just handed you a map and uh, essentially the blue area is what everyone would currently consider Avamore when you drive by on the highway. That's the area you see in Ada County. The green area is um, a portion of Ada County and then a portion of Boise County. Um, as you guys might know, we recently got approval in Boise County for another planned community. So the idea here is that we're, we're trying to pull those new homes, uh, new approval into the CID um, to, to make a cohesive taxing district. Um, that was 1700 at build out. That's right. Thank you. Sorry, Commissioner Kenyon, that's correct. Um, when we formed this district originally with Ada County, we needed Eagle's consent because we're in their comprehensive plan area. At that time, to get their consent, we entered into a private agreement with them that if we ever wanted to expand the district, we had to go back to them and, and get further consent. So last week, um, we asked Eagle for that consent. We, we filed a, a, a consent document with them. We're on their agenda for May 25th for them to consider approval of that. I sent that document to Ammon, your lawyer. I think this is. Um, I said to expansion of community yeah, infrastructure. Correct. That's correct. Um, uh, Jason Pierce is a uh, signatory to it. Yep, Mayor Pierce would sign that on behalf of the city. And we'd, we'd come with that consent back to you, along with a petition to, to formally ask you to expand the district. Um, so can you go through the expansion and the number of acres and the number of homes? Absolutely. It looks like you've got. Yeah. So I, I do want to clarify. Um, I, I threw this together a little hastily <clears throat> this morning. And so the, the if you're in the column, Avonmore CID, Ada County, current district area, where it reads 919. Yes. That after discussion with Ammon and Adam out uh, in the in the foyer, we think that might be more like uh, seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred. But in the end, what the goal here is, and, and we've had our engineers confirm this, when if this expansion is approved, the area of the CID in Ada County will exceed the area in Boise County, and that's material because. Um, there will be a mixed CID board in the future if this happens. So the, the county with more area in the district, all three of their commissioners will serve on the board and two of the Boise County commissioners will serve on the board. So this, this body will then have five members, three of them will be you, two of them will be whoever Boise County selects amongst <coughs> their three commissioners. So how many homes is this total at build out with the 1,047 acres? Or that's, no, what's the total? So the total is 15, 1,537 in Ada County plus 10,047 in Boise. And then um, let's add the Gem County in there. Because the, we haven't seen a recent expansion plan. So trying to get the bigger yeah. picture. So at build out, what's the total acreage <coughs> for all three counties in, in it, that? Build out of the, not just the district that's shown. Yeah. Uh, the entire, uh, it'd be 10,000 residential units as well as the commercial that associated with it. And size of commercial, uh, just approximately? Uh, commercials, probably about just over a million square feet of commercial. A million square feet, OK. What's the time frame on that? Any, any time soon? Yeah, it is. It's actually. In your I, lifetime? <laughs> I'm just wondering <laughs> if everything goes as planned, I could celebrate my 100th birthday with the last home being <laughs> So about 30 years. <laughs> about 30 years. Huh? Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. Looking at the recitals, and I'm looking at E, and again at F, it talks about consent to form a new CID. So this just wouldn't be an expanded CID since we're already the CID. Um, you would dissolve, you're suggesting we dissolve this CID and formulate a new one? Mr. Chair, Commissioner Kenyon, 
the recitals reflect a consent that was given about a year ago. Um, there were there were essentially two paths we could have taken to to levy taxes on the Boise County area. One would have been to form a new district, and in 2020 we went to to Eagle, and they consented to form that new district. After a lot of discussion with Legal and Avamore, we decided that the duplicity of two districts, you know, two assessors, two levies, was more confusing. And so that recital reflects that a prior consent was given. This consent is slightly different. So instead of a new district, it is for the expansion. So this district will not be dissolved. It's just growing. Do you have a proposed draft agreement for the mixed CID then, the new CID? So we haven't really gotten that far down the road, but I don't anticipate changing the governing docs at all to the extent the district's legal counsel thinks it's necessary. We could add Boise County to that, but at the end of the day, it's still the Avamore CID board, um, and that board will just have different members. Okay. to those agreements. So, Mr. Chair, when I came on board a couple of years ago, um, the conversation then was the hopes was just to annex have Eagle, City of Eagle, annex UN, um, and, and get the 80 county out of the CID business. So what happened there? Why are we moving in this direction versus having City of Eagle annex UN? Uh, actually, um, that is still the long-term goal. Um, we're having discussions now with Eagle and meeting with their council over the next few months, just as kind of open houses with their council to explain exactly what our plans are, um, with the anticipation that sometime in the not so distant future we would annex and then it would be just the Eagle council on the sitting as the board of the CID. Yeah, that would be the simplest, I would think. So you're in negotiations then, that's still Yes, we're, uh, they've, uh, they've asked that we participate in four open houses with council so that they can ask questions prior to an application so they can get it clear in their mind. So the first one is next week. All right, okay. And then there's one each, there's uh, four of them over a little over three months. Okay. And at that point in time, uh, we'll have the application ready to submit. Is that is that those are, are those open houses strictly with the council or is the public invited? The public is invited, but it's just it's just an open house. It won't be public engagement at the time. It gives the council uh, the opportunity to have some of their questions answered, but it will be open to the public. It's been in fact the first one's been noticed. All right. Okay. And just if I could dovetail on that slightly, Commissioner Kenyon, mm -hmm. the. You know, timing is sort of of the essence with the CIDs. Um, before we do any plats or anything like that, we have to make sure that we get this in place on that land so that we can properly assess it going forward. So it's um, just sort of a timing issue why we're having to, to do the joint board with Boise County because, as you know, we're, we're growing up into that area. Um, we, we hope it's temporary, um, and we do hope to annex into Eagle as soon as possible. So yeah, I'd have questions, but probably for legal counsel. I mean, what does what kind of position does that put us in? Since we really don't have control over Eagle, um, in being sort of an interim joint board, is that something we should discuss in legal? Uh, we can. We can set up for an executive session. I would say that in terms of of uh, having control over Eagle at this point, none of the district is within. Well, it's within their comprehensive plan area, and so there's this consent arrangement in place in terms of the actual development there's you know really it'll go through the the process with Boise County and Ada County as it's an unincorporated county area for each of those areas like it would in any other development that would occur uh, in those areas so the CID is is a, it'll be a separate though you know somewhat related process there'll be a separate process in terms of development with Cladding and any requirements related to, to the actual development. So, but once you're annexed in, into Eagle, then it will be Eagle that will be the CID mm -hmm. board, yeah. not Ada County. Yeah, Correct. Council. And that would making it would be making any decisions related to planning and zoning mm -hmm. issues. And, yeah. Right. So. And so, wouldn't we want to wait and see if that happens before we try to do a joint CID? Commissioner Beck uh, or Chairman Beck, Commissioner Kenyon. 
we've we've kind of waited as long as possible in our mind and that and we we're not trying to make more work for anyone of course um but now is the time where we feel it's necessary to expand the district um because again development is moving up there and we need to uh, get that brought into the district before lots are sold and individual owners are up there okay. yeah. walk me through the the water part of this um because Initially, this development was going to be on its own wells, and then somehow during that early process, it got hooked into Suez. And now Suez, we're pumping water from the floor here in the Treasure Valley, the aquifer, up to your station right at Avamore. So now are, are we proposing that we're going to then pump all the way up to Boise County? So we'd be taking water from here up to Boise County? <clears throat> What's Actually, that uh, initially, uh, it was we did get, and we've got water permits. Uh, in the foothills you know, under the Avamore land. Water rights or permits? Uh, permits. They have not been developed yet. They're in the process. Actually, there's exploratory wells going in right now. Um, but at that point in time, uh, we went with Suez and we spent about, actually somewhere between six and eight million dollars on the pipeline going up to Avamore. And we made a uh, request to the uh, uh, PUC and they were going to make most of the core area of Avamore part of their area at that time. At that point in time, the PU said, PUC said, well, do you have uh, the water supply at the pipes initiation to supply all of it at that time? They, and and uh, uh, Suez said, no, but we never do when we add area. We find it when their development occurs. So for that reason, they, they uh, had the uh, Suez area is just the Avamore development that exists right now as the uh, Suez area. Suez is going to serve probably about 200, 250 homes in Boise County in addition to the Avamore area. Everything else will be supplied by our wells. We're working with the developers to the west of us uh, used to be the M3, the Spring Valley, mm -hmm. yeah. and they've already got a, uh, a big well that they've already drilled. That was land that we sold them when that project started, and there's two separate aquifers there. Uh, we both spent about a million dollars finding all of that. Both the aquifers are under that ground, just, uh, just west of Willow Creek Road between that and uh, Highway 16, and both of those flow towards Emmett, the aquifers. So one of those we kept as our permit. We're doing exploratory wells there. We're working with Eagle now because if Eagle can observe Spring Valley and they're gonna serve Avamore, and there's a lot of development going in south of us. The golf course was just sold and the old uh, uh, Colin Connolly place and they're, they're all doing applications into Eagle. So Eagle will pretty much have everything you know, going north. Um, we are working with the other developers to put in a 17 mile line that connects in West Eagle, goes up to the wells in Spring Valley and our well connects those into it, comes back over to Avamore and instead of having individual tanks, we're building a two million gallon tank at Avamore that will provide pressure for all of the foothills, not just those three developers, you know, the golf course, the Connolly Place, Spring Valley. It'll be the pressure, and then it'll actually go south on Highway 55 and connect into the Eagle system again at Beacon Light. That way, all of the development in the foothills would be supplying their own water between the wells we bring to it. And then if one line had, you know, one neck or leg of it was down for a while, everybody still have water. So we're currently working that way, and that would be, uh, and all of the developers we've hired, uh, the engineers and all of that, and it would all be, of course, at our expense. Uh, Sounds like a good system. I guess my concern is, um, you know, water's not a problem. You have plenty of it until you don't, right? <laughs> we have a couple years of a drought, and we've been uh, sort of warned by IDWR that we really shouldn't be expanding in the foothills because of lack of water. And we're bringing it from the aquifer here. Um, IDWR is supposed to have a tool, their model, out by the end of the year. It'll be the first time that we can actually project whether we have enough water and where our tables are at and track our tables. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, what conversations you've had with 
IDWR on just the, not the quantity, that's a whole, or quality, that's a whole different issue, but just the quantity. Just to assure, we already have some wells, artesian wells drawing up, drawing up in the summer months in the Eagle area. They're not the deep wells that people use for pumps for, you know, water, but they are the more surface artesian wells. So, I, you know, I just have to ask, water is a, well, water, the... whiskey, and... I'll say wine. <laughs> Three most important things in Idaho. <laughs> well, I think we spent a lot of time and energy and money identifying the aquifers that we are pulling water from, and both of those flow north and west towards Emmett, the water yeah. where we'll be pulling the water from. So they do not, and, and of course we work with Idaho Department of Water Resources at the time, plus our engineers, to identify that, that these in no way impact So they're like downstream from Boise and Eagle, you would say? It, yeah, know. even though these are up in the foothills, and you'd think that, you know, you, everything's going to flow down, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't. These aquifers uh, flow uh, north and west towards Emmett. Mm, okay. And then why did, you, why did you not build the wells in the first place? Why did you end up going in with Suez? Was it um, just cost or? I it think was just was... The, the cost of getting everything done and the time frame involved. So now you've got other developers, you're all working together that it's more Yeah, and if you know if the other developers didn't come online, we would still put in those wells and give them to Eagle upon annexation. So because okay. I mean the agreement with Eagle is you provide the, the water, you provide the infrastructure, and then you give the system to Eagle to operate and and that's and that what would be the plan. If the other developers somehow dropped out or whatever, we would still uh, Build, the, build out our water infrastructure and give it to you. Other than what's existing under Suez and then a few hundred homes just on the, in the, you know, the initial part of the uh, Boise County part. So my understanding then is Suez going into Boise County, then those Boise County 200, 250 residents would be rate payers. So then they would have, they would help to pay for the ongoing maintenance, et cetera. Yes. Right? It'd be yeah. a contiguous line. Okay. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, uh, the um, with Suez, it just makes sense to to do that because it, they'd be kind of that first part would be kind of unhooked from the rest of the infrastructure we're putting in for the remaining part of Avamar. Just to separate them out. And, and you know, and it's interesting because um, what's interesting is to make you know Avamar uses about forty percent of the water of a home in the valley. Our sewer plant, we know that uh, we only get 110 gallons per day of effluent compared to about 250 for a house that's in the valley. That goes to good the, reuse out there. And then everything that we do use is reused. So yeah. we use about uh, 40 or about 40 percent of the water that a house in the valley does. How do you measure um, having enough water for fire suppression? Because you're obviously in an area that's more prone to fires. Um, so how do you know that you've got the, the water there for fire suppression? How is that measured? Well, uh, obviously the uh, fire district has to approve all of our plans to make sure we've got uh, the hydrants there for fire suppression. Uh, we've also done things like put in ponds in places, so if there is a fire, the helicopters can dip from them. Even our uh, wastewater that we, our filtered water, our effluent, goes into a tank that provides pressure but also, we didn't put a lid on the tank so the helicopters can dip out of that if we have any wildfires. Okay. But all of the neighborhoods will have um, hydrants, fire hydrants for fire mm -hmm. suppression. So that would be up to Eagle Fire District to put their stamp of approval on that? Yeah, and they won't approve. I mean, in our last phase that was approved here, and the engineer said we'd have pressure going all the way up this hill, well, the last four houses were just a couple pounds under pressure. So those lots are developed but until the next tank goes in higher, we can't develop them because Eagle Fire wouldn't approve those. But you, you're showing them as approved lots, but Eagle Fire isn't, so they're sitting empty. Okay, okay. thanks, Dan. All right. Do we have any other discussion? I just have one other question. So, would um, so the, you're having the open houses with the council? Would it be? Who of us to have like one a person from our like development services there to, you know, not participate but just to you know, sit and listen. Sure. That way they could bring us to, along, you know, up to have speed. You can go. Maybe you can go. <laughs> <laughs>
That's why I want to send staff. We have enough meetings. But I do think it's important for us to get, you know, input in a timely manner from those open houses. That way, when you come back to us, um, you know, if anything is brought up then, we'll be able to talk about that in a timely manner. Absolutely, yeah. The, um, we thought we're the ones that actually requested that we do this just so that, you know, you do an application for this bigger project and drop it in there and everybody, it just gives everybody the opportunity uh, to listen as the council asks the questions that pertain to it and how it affects Eagle. So we're doing it. We tried to get it in two meetings. We thought, gosh, they're two hour sessions. It's going to take more. So we went to three and finally we said, we're going to need four of these. So. And then Kathleen, you thought you were going to get out of the CID one of these days. Yeah, no. Did. <laughs> and your first, your first open house is next week. Uh, actually, I, I think it's wrong. this it's Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday. Oh, it's just this coming Thursday. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, we'll make next sure. Week, but time goes yeah. short. I think it is Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Thursday at 10. Because I was supposed to go to Phoenix Thursday. I got to go on Friday now. <laughs> 10 a.m. Let me double check. And can people call in, I assume? Like our staff wouldn't have 10 to go. 10.30. 10.30? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a WebEx invite or Zoom or... I believe it's, person? I think, is it Brent Collins from your staff? Okay. He's yeah. been, I know he's been involved in watching our Boise County stuff. I think he's up to speed on this as well. Okay. There is sure, a, yeah, there, there will it. be a link though, to the extent you don't want to go in person, you can watch it. Actually, uh, you said, is it, um, I've got First City, excuse me, Eagle Council mm -hmm. Informational 3 to 5. You're right. It's three, three to five. Three to five. Three yep. to ten. Three to five. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then one for the question. So will you have to go back to the PUC as you expand um, the system, especially going into Boise County? Is there some point where you've got to show, um, you know, the, the infrastructure and whatnot that the fees aren't going to increase, you know? Yeah, the infrastructure was probably, uh, you know, we more than paid for our way on infrastructure. For You know, we get 500 gallons a minute, which typically in the valley would only serve about three or 400 homes, and it's serving about 900 homes plus the commercial up there. Um, they're not going to need a whole bunch more water, but part of it is we have to uh, um, pay to improve one of their pump stations. So we're paying for that, or our por proportionate share of that. Um, but, you know, we already spent $6 million that, of infrastructure that we donated to the Suez cause. But The reason I ask is we just went through a PUC rate case as interveners, mm -hmm. right, because they wanted a 22% increase. They yeah. ended up getting a little bit less than nine. Um, you know, so that's, you know, obviously on people's minds, um, you know, we want growth to pay for itself and we don't want existing rate payers for Suez to, to pay, you know, for ongoing maintenance in Boise County, for example. No, I think most of the time is it did exist with um, um, Suez. We, of course, paid for all of the infrastructure to get the water to Avamar and gave that to them. We also built another 12 inch line uh, after that, after the approval. We built in, or we put in another line out to there, which we haven't used that capacity at all. Uh, that was several years ago. And, and uh, now we're going to pay to upgrade the pump station. So, yeah, we more than pay our fair share because uh, this pump station upgrade, we won't use all of that even. Um, so does that come out of um, the developer's pocket or does that come eventually then you have to increase the homeowners association fees? To no, cover nothing that goes to the pay. homeowners. It's all out of the developer's pockets. Okay. Yeah. yeah, our initial house, we had $40 million in infrastructure before we built our <laughs> first house. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's kind of interesting. You know, we built a substation for and gave it to Idaho Power. Uh, everybody kind of talks about it. They forget that when I build that substation, I'm putting all these homes on all new stuff that doesn't need any upgrade. That gives Idaho Power more ability to upgrade some of their aging infrastructure because we just put all new stuff in. It's serving, you know, yeah. nobody thinks about that. Right. And I wish there was an economist could figure out <laughs> how much that saves the, the uh, ratepayers. That same station that we put in for, uh, you know, five million maybe, um, Spring Valley's building one. The cost of that is now fifteen million. 
just over, you know, the... 15 years. 15 years. This <laughs> there's not lumber in it, is there? <laughs> I don't know. No. There's copper. But there's copper wire. <laughs> copper wire. <laughs> copper wire, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Well, thanks, Dan. All right, well, thanks. Thanks, I appreciate it. Is there, uh, is there any, other, uh, any other discussion from the board or anyone? Um, yeah. If I may, Chair, Commissioners, maybe if we can just run through next steps, assuming that, that EGLE provides consent. I don't know. Adam, yeah, we can prepare. Maybe just so that you're aware of what would be coming. Okay, sure. Uh, if, if EGLE All right. provides their consent. So. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, so as we talked about, the CID Act does allow for expansion, and we would be talking about expansion here. Um, so the same district that already exists, just bigger. Uh, and the CID Act does contemplate that. It does contemplate multi-jurisdictional expansion, so across uh, jurisdictional lines, in this case, Ada County and Boise County. The process for that uh, largely mirrors uh, the process for formation of the district, which um, I know none of you were around for, I don't believe, uh, originally. But um, it, essentially what happens is, is the developer submits a petition saying we would like to expand. The board then takes that petition and does a resolution of intention to do that. Um, and then there are, there are multiple steps that follow. One of those is approval of all the landowners that would be in the expanded territory, uh, which I assume is presumably basically the developer. Um, I, those are all probably developer-owned properties. There's then uh, approval required from each of the governing bodies uh, that would be impacted. So in this case, it would be Ada County because there's expansion occurring within uh, unincorporated Ada County and also Boise County. So both the Ada County commissioners, Boise County commissioners would have to sign off on that. That can be done jointly or separately. Um, there is a public hearing requirement. Uh, so there's notice that goes along with that. Uh, and then, um, sure, I don't miss anything. And then there would be an adoption of a re resolution actually approving the expansion. I think that document would probably also include uh, some of the governance issues that Jeff touched upon. Uh, those are set out by statute. So the jurisdiction where the largest portion of the land within the district is located, uh, which is contemplated to be Ada County. Uh, three of that commission's members, which would be all of you, uh, would serve on that board, and then two from the minority uh, land area, which in this case would be Boise County, so two of their commissioners. So we would have a five-person board. Um, obviously, there are some considerations that come with that as far as meetings and scheduling and administrative considerations, right? Um, but that the new district board, so this meeting, would be a joint, essentially a, a joint board uh, composed of both the Ada County commissioners and two of the Boise County commissioners. Um, as far as, uh, and then uh, to, uh, to Kathleen's point and role, right, there, there are some um, additional sort of administrative uh, uh, things that will have to occur with having a multi-jurisdictional CID as far as coordination for property tax purposes, um, and other facets of, or, of running the CID itself on a day-to-day, -day, right? It's going to have to cross those county lines, um, and there's going to have to be coordination there. Um, one other thing, uh, as the commissioners may be aware of, when, when CID 1, which is what we're talking about, was formed, there was a general obligation bond election uh, that was approved, uh, up to $226 million uh, in multiple series of bonds, um, that is regulated by the development agreement as far and, and really governed um, and sort of limited by development itself. So it, it's not as if they could go out and issue all $226 million of bonds at this point. But as development occurs um, and property taxes go up, their ability to issue bonds goes up. If we were to expand the district, it, it, again, it's the same district. So that general obligation bond authorization would Main, would continue in effect and could be used for projects within the expanded district once that occurs. So there wouldn't be a need for a new uh, general obligation bond election and uh, any projects could occur now within sort of the expanded district. Um, I don't know, Amanda, anything else that I, I think I that glossed covers over? It. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm just interested again in, in timing. Um, if you're having these open houses with Eagle, you know, what would be the earliest that you would hear whether they're willing to annex you or not? This seems like a lot of work to go through if, you know, a couple months later, um, six months or four months or two or whatever, Eagle's ready to, to take it over. 
it would be uh, a lot longer than that, any of these things. Um, you know, it'll take four months just to get to one hearing or one of these open houses a month for the next four months. Then it's submitting an application. Uh, and in my experience, getting working with staff on these kinds of applications, I know at Ada County it took almost a year or a little more than a year, our original application. So it would probably just working with staff take at least a year. Um, we're hoping we can do it faster. Um, but it's, I'm not gonna. So are you envisioning that we would have this joint CID for you know a year and a half, two years? It could go that long, yeah. I'm hoping we can get it done faster than that, but you know, hope, I've always hoped that these applications move faster and they never do. But. And, and you need the the, uh, the joint, uh, the combined uh, improvement district so that it, it applies to all your property in Boise County. Chairman Beck, that's correct. And I think Commissioner Kenyon was here at the time. There's been discussions um, with the prior board about just fairness, right, amongst our residents. If we don't do this now, there's a chance that, that some residents in our community would never be in the CID. Um, but enjoying the infrastructure paid for by others. So really, we're just trying to make sure we get it all in place um, on all the land um, and that it, it runs equitably in the future. Okay. And it'll take 30 years to build out, so the, uh, the, there'll be a small assessment on us as a landowner over the next 30 years on the stuff that we're grazing. <laughs> so it's, it's, you'll be 100. And I'll be, uh, well, yeah. If, I'll be 100 years old. Yeah. You'll see my picture in the paper. <laughs> Hand in the keys to the last homeowner. <laughs> the last homeowner, yeah. Well, my wife told me I got to work till I die because she doesn't want me at home. Oh, well. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> Perfectly. All right. Well, is there uh, any other discussion that we need to handle before we uh, recess? If not, we'll be in recess. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're off the record. We're off the record.